The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman on this 26th day of September. Just two and a half sessions to go. And then July, uh, September's candle wraps up. That's going to be very interesting to see what happens in the first uh, week or two of October. So the Dow's are 47, waiting for the Fed speak at 2 o'clock. It's a 26539. Um the peak D that was made in the Chapman Wave methodology, that's the fourth highest peak where other things can happen. It's 26,769. Shows you, oh, that was uh, a, a number missing. That should have been 21. All right, let me just change that. On the September the 21st, whoops. Mm -hmm. Okay. 21st, we're looking at a high that was made, fourth highest peak. Doji candle pulls back sharply for two sessions. Today's an inside day so far. Make it real simple. If there is a close underneath yesterday's low of 26,475, 26, there's a real good chance that the 26,433 nine period exponential moving average and the 26,330 level the 14 period exponential moving average will be tested so far the MACD is starting to see some slight uh decrease in the histogram the vertical lines that you're seeing here those gray vertical lines as the MACD's fast moving average the nine period differential that green line starts to come down a little bit but it's still look at that wide distance that's still very positive it would take about 180 points to the downside for that MACD to start getting close to turning down, and that definitely will take the stochastic at 83%, below 80%. So I'm watching this closely. On the upside, if after the Fed speak is um, turned into a, a positive because the rates aren't going to move as quickly as everyone thought to the upside, they've already moved a lot. Um, watch that high of yesterday. It's the 26,634 level. The close above that says, hey, ho-hum, sideways consolidation going on. I think this is a consolidation, and you can see it in some of the in other indices. Look at the S&P. S&P has been lagging a little bit. It's kind of stuck down here, made a peak E on the same date as the Dow that was on the 21st um, at 2940. 0.91 trading right now 29.22 20 points lower up 6.53 not bad action um watching this closely because the MACD is about to turn negative and stochastics below 80 percent it's going to be a very important close today because if the s p drops it's up six and a half if it's if it drops to just a plus two or a minus two late in the afternoon that's going to be a big negative in the short term, that is the daily chart. Weekly charts are still very good. QQQ, here we go. The, the three Qs, nice bounce today, up 1.02, up 0.55%. Dow's only up 0.17. S&P's up 0.21. Hey, some strength has come back to the um, NDX 100 trading vehicle, the QQQ Trust Series. It's trading at 185.16. And I'm looking at this and I'm saying that's peak A, peak B, peak C. It goes to a leg D above 185.48 and then we've got to assess where it is because it'll be one of those very quick a to b to c to d and that usually implies that there should be some kind of a pullback remember i said pullback i didn't say uh, a crunch to the downside that's that's the nature of this particular pattern yes there could be a crunch to the downside i'm saying the pattern itself says hey be ready because there could be a sudden quick slide in the daily chart in this particular instance. Weekly chart's is good, monthly chart's is good. IWM, let's get to that. Well, a lot of questions came in overnight and this morning. I'll get to those in a moment. Yes, this is the big clue. The IWM down 1.11, uh, down 0.65. Uh, you know, that, that's a big divergence. Um, this is saying to me that there's a really good chance that we've got a PG in the weekly chart, not the alternate count C. And we've got to monitor this closely because the technicals are actually quite poor. The price has held the 14-period moving average um, at this particular stage. And then monthly chart, you've, got, you've had the whole month to make a new high, and it hasn't made a new high above 173.39. Yep, 
and is down at 168.95. So a lot of points to make up in two and a half sessions. I'm saying IWM is probably giving us a hint that there is a rotation going on, and uh, the Dow was the last to make its high in the key indices. The New York Stock Exchange still has a long way to go. I suspect this year, 2018, it will get close to that uh, attempt to make its January 26 high. Let's go to gold. At this particular point at GC, the continuous contract is down, oh, 7.6, 6.6 .6 at 1198. What, you know, this lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m, what an amazing pattern this is. We've seen it so many times. Will this eventually turn around and all of a sudden you're trading in 1230 in the gold? Well, a lot has to happen because this is messing up. That weekly, this is weekly chart is now just making a rectangle formation. This is not good. Silver, remember yesterday I was talking about silver and I said silver has been in a tear. It's been leading. And we have seen over the period of this year, that there have been one or two times, one in particular I'm talking about, and I can't remember if it was the move back in June or if it was the most recent move in August, where silver suddenly, I think it was earlier on, silver had a really strong move. Gold just didn't even know that it happened. It was out in another room having coffee or maybe uh, something else. And um, the next thing you know is that, no, it didn't lead gold and the GDX, the gold miners, and... and um, the, the gold stocks much, much higher. In fact, what happened is when silver turned down, gold and silver plunged. So maybe, I don't know, maybe we're looking at that again, that silver aberration is a key because that was a really nice pattern. Quick A to B to C, peak C that is. Uh, if there's no new high today, stuck in this rectangle formation, it needs 1473 to really say, hey, I'm out of here. Right now at 1442, down 0.07, not a big deal. It's just hanging out, that's all. Uh, crude oil pulled back a little bit off to the doji candle. This is going to be very important. The MAGD is good. Stochastic's at 86%. If the, if the crude oil continuous contract at 71.84, down 44 cents, starts to trade at any point in the next, by Monday afternoon, if crude oil is trading above 70 280 to 7310, closing above that level, that is really good action and says, you know what, I'm going to try and make a U-shaped pattern to test my 7354 high of um, the week of July the 6th and makes 70, in any case, 70.85 to 7027 on the key support levels at this particular time. Um, TLT, oh man, this TLT, today is such an important day. Look, the TLT is trying to make a base at 116.19, the low of the 19th. The TBT, the opposite, right, inverted. This is the yield itself, it copies the yield. The TBT, which is the ultra short Lehman 20 year treasury bond ETF, is down 20 cents, having made a peak E. So if you look at the FVX, I wonder if it's going to get to, it did. It made a leg D. It could be a potential peak D. The technicals are fabulous in both the daily, the weekly is improved. Oh man, the TNX, that is the T trading uh, down 17 cents, having made an alternate count F slash B. I think it's probably going to be an F. Oh, the next one and a half points, two points in the TLT or TBT is going to tell us a lot about rates over the coming three, four to five weeks. I'll be back, that was fifth, we'll be right back. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank and get the type of interest they receive instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per billable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year, paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month per lot range from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. All right, folks, we're back. Dow's up 49, S&P's up 7. So this is really what I'm looking at. Um, within the context of the markets, the TNX has gone to 31.10, six cents away from breaking to a leg D in the monthly chart. Is it going to do that? Well, the MACD just crossed positive in the weekly chart. Remember, the weekly chart is the one that takes the most time to repair damage. It holds, 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 and then when the daily chart starts to break down, as it did back at uh, when on the 1st of August at 30.18 and came down to 28.08 on the 22nd of August, we started, started to move to the upside at that trough E, it went reversal, and now it's in leg F slash B. Well, this is going to be very important because under all the economic news blurbs that have come out recently a lot of the a lot of the stocks that announced earnings have really been somewhat disappointing i mean look at ctas ctas part of my cash index syntas uh, amazon spy the spy that's the uh, s p deposit receipts and h home depot look cash says that Syntas has plunged 7.39 this morning on earnings news, makes out of 217.34 at the beginning of September, September the 7th. Today, the 26th, it hits a low of 201, um, no, 200.76. Trading right now, 205, a huge gap down. Peak F in the daily, peak E in the uh, weekly, and a leg E in the monthly. I have to take this quite seriously because for me, this is an economic bellwether. Let me just see, Mar Mar Marriott, Marriott, put it over here. I'm coming back to the uh, the yields in a moment. MAR, Marriott is in leg E making a peak E, but it's way under the 149 monthly uh, peak D January high. It went down to 120, it's trading out 130. So it's had quite a bit of a pullback. And um, yeah, that's uniforms, uh, overalls. So that's the industry that it's in. So I'm watching this very closely. This is where Home Depot is. I don't get to do my stuff at Home Depot. What a disappointment. What a, what, to get through takes hours. To be there takes hours. I don't know what is going on there. 
and they're overwhelmed. They've taken on so much stuff. And everybody here, people talking about flipping houses. I've, this is dangerous stuff. Uh, the housing sector, boy, just be careful. Uh, lo, um, 215.43 was the all-time high on the 12th of September. Straighting a little bit under that, it's a 208. No big deal, seven points. But it is a peak D in the weekly and a leg. I have to call it a leg. Hey, now there's nothing else I can call it a leg C in the monthly. So looking out, it's good, but shorter term, we're going to watch this very closely. Now, if you look at the TYX, that is the 30-year yield, it has also gone to that leg D, but it made a new recovery high. It's already gone to a leg E in the monthly and a leg E slash B in the in the weekly because it went to 32.48 and the high that was made in May was 32.47. One penny, one tick, one penny makes a big difference in the Chapman Wave methodology and I have to respect that. So is there going to be a high level consolidation? A lot is going to be uh, happening over the uh, the next, I'd say, into tomorrow morning. With uh, how can the Fed not say that we will increase the yield, uh, the, the rates? But the fact is, it's how they do it, how often, and when, and that's really the issue. So yeah, the higher rates are coming, but how does it impact these particular charts, the five-year, the ten-year, and the thirty-year? yields and that's going to be very important um okay question is always xlf you've had yields going up why isn't the xlf soaring well it screamed to this um peak at in the 29th just five days ago yep five days ago now it's at 28 22. i have to tell you i said my fear is that the s p select financial spider fund is making a right shoulder failure pattern what does that mean it looks like a lowercase h it's the hint that the MACD is fading, stochastics fading, and that there should be a failure below the previous high to make an H pattern. Instead of the, uh, the cup formation, you're getting an arch formation. So we'll see. All I can say is that if the XLF in the next three weeks starts to trade under 27.50, so 28.21, and it trades under that level for more than three sessions, that's just not going to be a good sign for that monthly chart. Any spike to 29.20, for whatever reason, would be really good action. Okay, that was that. Boeing, yep, I usually look at Boeing. Boeing is trading up a little, no, down a dollar thirteen, failing underneath the previous high of 374.48. That was the all-time high, I believe. Yes, 374.48. Um, I said that the pattern I'm looking at here in the weekly chart has a lower, it has a cup formation and then a higher low, and it doesn't have to make a higher high, but it can, in fact, uh, just become a double U formation. And if it takes out the left side low, in this case, if it ever takes out 327.29, there's a really good chance that the next time it also takes out the left side low of the um, week of March the 30th, of 311.17. I was asked when I look at the IAI, we got out of it, we were in it. I, it was more an experiment. I wanted to start a position there to see if there was any rally that a breakout in the down now could occur, which would really um, influence the IAI. That's the iShares broker dealer sector. No, we took a small profit. We're done, we're out. And at this particular point, it's trading at 63.70. It looks like it wants to test the most important 63.29 low. I think that was back in April. If you look at the XBD, a lot of people look at that rather than the IAI. Same pattern, not quite as bad, just a tad better. It's that peak D in the monthly that has me a little concerned because it is trading right at the nine period moving average support. It breaks 271.16 where it is right now. The all-time high here was made way back in March, I think it was, at about 3.05, no, 3.03.18, back March the 16th, and it's been coming to making lower lows and lower highs since. I want to see the broker, dealer, sector screaming to the upside, and that's where we're getting a full-blown market um, coda phase. It's just going to go on and scream to the upside. I think that has to wait. Um, next question was uh, Triple M, yep, Triple M. Had a nice bounce and it kind of stalled, and now it's made an E three days ago. 
uh, in the daily is pulled back a little bit at 211. It's holding well. Make it simple. A close below 205 in the next week from Triple M is very negative, and a close above 219, 220 is resistance. Let's say 219.50 would be very positive. Uh, UTX, and I haven't looked at UTX today. We do own it. It's up 32 cents, making an alternate count E slash B. I get a feeling this is going to turn into an E, but in the meantime, we're going to remain along from the 119s, holding very nicely. Um, yeah, so the parameters to watch at 140.03, a close below 138 would be very negative on the daily chart, not so much the weekly chart, but the daily, and a close in the 145s would be spectacular. And uh, the Dow's up 58, S&P's up seven and a quarter. We'll be right back. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics, including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan its most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Monday, September 24th, TFNN is launching a new updated version of our website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, and starting Monday, you'll be able to experience the new and improved TFNN website. If you're a current subscriber, don't worry, your subscription will be automatically transferred. The new TFNN.com will allow much easier access to all your account and subscription information. Get ready for the new TFNN.com educating investors this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com so, so yeah so you know i'm looking at bank of america i'm looking at goldman sachs i'm looking at i almost got fooled last week in that big move to the upside and saying to myself oh man this is the breakout and then other way breakout why would it be breaking out now when it had all that time uh, the the financials to break out when when yields were screaming to the upside something was fishy so i said let's hold back we've held back just as well maybe this is the period that we need to watch the uh, the goldman sachs's bank of america uh you know this xlf that weekly chart uh, was doing very nicely, and now uh, it's just, 
Well, we'll watch it. We'll see what happens today. In the next few days, we're going to get a lot of information on the XLF, I believe. Another question I had was IYT. Yep, yep. That's very interesting, isn't it? The IYT had a fantastic move to the upside. This is the Dow. Yeah. You know, I don't do Dow theory, but for years, there's, there was always just someone on, on CNBC who would talk about the Dow theory. Then I'm, yeah, I'm talking about Dow theory. It's, oh, yeah, Dow theory. And then every time, almost every time I looked at it, I thought, whew, that's interesting. This is just about the time I'm about to get a sell signal, and then the market would pull back. So I, all I can say is I love the fact that if the transports are acting very well, it's telling you that some parts of the economy are doing very nicely. And that's really the way I look at it. I like to see the two move together, but the high that was made, uh, the all-time high that was made on the 14th of September at 209.43 in the iShares Dow Jones Transportation Average Index Fund is seeing a trade right now in the 204 area. No big deal, but what is a big deal is if there is a pullback under, it's a 204.70, a close below 202. Let's make it 202. In the next week, would say, be careful. While the weekly is still good, the monthly is still good. How deep a correction unfolds in the transports could be telling us something about this whole rotational nature of the different sectors. For instance, look at the SMHs. The SMHs uh, trading right now at 105.98, uh, had a high of 109.89 just on the 5th of September. And now it's really testing and testing and testing. Look at the weekly chart. All-time high, 114.55, the week of the 16th of March. There's that oval pattern in the monthly chart, still holding very well, but the MACD's turned down. Stochastic's quite weak. I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, this oval at this particular level could have other connotations because there are times when the oval becomes an arch formation and if the low, the most important low would be after D, it would be the trough at 106.14. What? Whoa, 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 I didn't say that. I mean, 95.47, if that low of the April candle, if that's taken out, I think we're in for a deeper correction in the semis and that could impact some of the other indices. How soon? How? We just don't know. I'm just giving you numbers. Okay. Uh, so covered a bunch of questions. There was one question I missed and I can't find it now. Oh, it was, yeah, it was a question in the uh, in the den. Could I look at, it was right here. Yeah, EGY, I spoke about briefly the other day because there was a question about where am I typing it? Wrong type, type it not in the den, type it on your chart right there. EGY is Volco Energy. And what I'd say is a very nice strong leg C. And if I recall correctly, I said that you could add a little bit. If you were in it, you could add a little bit, preferably a pullback to the 247 area. But it was looking like it wanted to go higher to at least uh, it was in C, it wanted to go higher. But um, it was the way it bounced off the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart from the 223 area that was impressive. Why is that impressive? It's up 19 cents at 278 of 7.33 percent on the day hey that is really good action i do like it volco energy and one of the things i said is the monthly chart has a peak c this is probably consolidating before it goes to leg d in the monthly chart watch 223 as key support that's what i said that's what i stay with um question i had was oh man oh that's right could i look at the vix index vix index what was the question um, so what's the VIX telling you? Okay, VIX is telling me right now, ho oh, hum, nothing to see at 12.04, down 38 cents. But my eye says that we've got to watch this closely. If the Dow later today, after the Fed talk, let's say between 2.30 and 3.30, if the Dow is not plummeted and start to pull back sharply, say under 26,490, Instead, it is holding at a plus 60 or so and doing very nicely. And the S&P is holding well and even the other indices are doing well. That's when I'm going to see what the VIX index does. Because if the VIX index goes down to the 1185 area, that's just saying it's a little too soon. Nothing serious in the downside is going to happen. If, on the other hand, the Dow takes gives back all the 68-point gain that it's at right now, 
starts to trade under, let's call it 20, 26,490. Trades under it after being up so nicely, and the S&P gives back the gains and starts to go under 28, 15, let's say 20, 28, 15. It's at 28, 23 right now. No, no, let's make it 28.17. Under 28.17, and the Qs pull back. That's going to say, here, you've got to be monitoring the VIX index cup formation. It's really like a bowl formation because it's so deep and so long. But this particular pattern right here says that if the VIX index at any time in the next three days, today's Wednesday, into Monday at this time, if the VIX has started to trade, it's at 12.05. If it starts to trade at 3.80 to 14.30, testing the weekly, not the daily, but the weekly 200-period moving average of 14.24, and imagine by this Friday, it closes above that. A close above it would say to me that cup formation has to be considered serious because now you've raised the base of support to 12.60 from the 11.80, 11.70 area. So that's the way I'm looking at it. Nothing to, for me, nothing to do for subscribers until after the Fed announcement. I'm not sure quite what they're going to be able to do. I also, uh, someone asked me yesterday, I didn't get to it, uh, Wood, W-O-O-D, that's the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF. That peak E in the monthly chart is something I'm monitoring really closely. The, the MACD has not closed negative yet. It's close, but it's still got a few days to go. Stochastic is under 80%, and the weekly chart has this lowercase h, in the Chapman methodology, remember we call it the dreaded H, making the low of 74.05, the low of the 17th of August, the week of the 17th of August, really important because the MACD could deflect low and the stochastic is only at 39%, and it was a peak F top in the weekly chart. This is important action coming up. Wood, ice is global and timber forestry, put it together with HG, the copper, copper holding well, but not great in the monthly chart, having been up at 3.39, now trading at 2.82. Um, very nice bounce of the two, let's call it 2.57s uh, over the last couple of weeks. This is a single leg A to the upside, even though it's a leg B. Watch it closely. If copper at any point goes under 2.75, I'd be looking at this the same way as Syntas. I'd say, hey, same way as I'm looking at with the iShares Global Forestry, I'd say, you know what? We could be in for another rotation mini recession in one of the sectors being very weak. And lo and behold, we'll see. Oh, I haven't even looked at the dollar. Can you believe it? IWM is really part of the clue. We'll go to the dollar in a moment. It's trading up a little bit. It's up 09. Uh, no big deal, but it's holding pretty darn well. I'll be back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So the uh, dollar is trading at 94.23, a little bit off the 93.81 low that was made about four days ago. Will a Fed discussion about higher rates lead to a higher dollar? I don't know that answer. I don't think anybody can actually tell right now. But the daily chart is starting to form a pattern that says it has to hold the 9381 200-period exponential moving average support on a closing basis, because if it doesn't, the 9370 200-period moving average of the weekly chart becomes a target. We still remain long. I'm still looking at the dollar longer term, and I'm thinking, yep, I think it's going to go higher. Uh, we'll see, because the EUR, USD, has made a peak D in the daily, right at the resistance of the 200-period moving average of 1.1767. It's trading at 1.1746, a little bit below it, leg B, gray leg B in the weekly chart. Um, monthly chart doesn't look all that great, so the numbers to watch all right here, a close above 1.182 in the next, I'd say, let's give it right all the way to Monday. Would be very positive and a close below 1.169. I would say that's a problem for the euro. The USDJPY um, hasn't done that. Yeah, it's in leg E. It is so close. Now I could even call it a peak C1, C2. It's not a peak yet, but it's so close to the, to the previous high of the week of the 20th of July, 113.21. It's trading at 112.93. We're going to be very interesting what happens both to yields and to currencies this afternoon, late this afternoon. Um, I, I didn't want to do any speculating. We've got our positions. We are now steel stocks. have done have, One of them have done absolutely fabulous, 11% or something. Um, and the actual index, uh, the ETF, has just done very nicely. Can't complain. And um, yeah, and we are short the semis, and uh, we'll see you know, what's going to happen over the next uh, couple of days. Now, what's really important about this is that um, I'll go alphabetically. AXP, can I look at AXP Mastercard? Okay, AXP. There's that PE. In fact, I wanted to short AXP uh, for subscribers this morning. I thought, you know, we have our positions. I just didn't want to get unfocused. I'm laser focused on what. I think is the most important thing right now. I think that the American Express, not all of them, American Express, I think has made a short-term top. I have to wait for the close today, but that's what I think. It's trading 108.85 down a dollar oh two. Had a high of 111 something the other day. Mastercard trading up a dollar forty. See, I don't like it when there's a mixed uh, picture within a sector. Of course, they do different things, but I'm calling this a leg F in Mastercard for now. Could even be an alternate count because the MACD is good, stochastic is good. <clears throat> um, it's trading at 223.58, up a dollar 46. Leg F in the weekly, leg F in the monthly. This is just very good action. And the other one, which of course is Visa, 
uh, Visa is trading up as well. So it's American Express was the one that I thought was weakest. I just didn't feel like I wanted to, um, to take a chance on one of the three that I always look at um, when the others were holding very well. And so we've done nothing. Uh, we'll see if it's influenced at all over the next couple of days. But in the meantime, you've got leg C in um, Visa trading at 150.15, up 56. I hope that answers the question there. Um, and Bob wants to know about GR. Oh, I looked at these last night. General Motors, a little bit up today, 24 cents at 33.79. It's gone from the 45 area, 44.45, down to the 33. It's just like as if it just couldn't hold any gain at all. Um, all time high was back in last year, was it? Oh, look at this. 46.76 back in October of 2017. Oh, man, when are the autos going to get any traction, all-wheel drive traction they need? Um, Ford is trying to test the left side low in the 920s. This is a 933. Ooh, ugly, ugly charts. Um, next question. Okay, so, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm very concerned about the autos. I don't quite know what's going on. Oh, well, I do know what's going on. Is that they are selling a lot, but I think that they're starting to reach a point where um, – the profitability factor is really the issue. And it has to do with tariffs, it has to do with a lot of things. I'll try to get into it. Oh, I said today I would talk about the uh, the market. I, I thought about this a lot over the period since my show yesterday when I had a number of callers talk, asking about um, what's going on in the bigger picture. Where, what am I looking at? And I did quite a bit of work on that, <coughs> not as much as I wanted, but a lot. Uh, sorry, question in the den about races is Ferrari. Ferrari's roaring like a Ferrari. It's up 2.65 at 141.69. It went from the all-time high at about just on 150 down to 116s and trading out 141. I like Ferrari. I think that the wealthy people are not bothered about anything at this point. They like Ferrari as well, so it's acting very well. Okay, now, the question I had was, do one more because Julie asked about, I did copper, I'll just do it one more time. Uh, High-grade copper is trading at 2.822. Um, let me just say that FCX, which is your copper stock, one of the key copper stocks, is not trading very well. And that says to me, both of them in the lower part of their range, even though copper's had a bit of a bounce. I'll talk more about that over the next, there's no rush. DBC has been my key uh, thing. I wanted to go along the other day, and then I just say, you know what, we've got other things that we're looking at. But DBC is a commodity index which really has more crude oil and it's done very nicely with a little doji candle two days ago, yesterday that is. I'm watching this closely to see what happens over the coming days. Now, the big picture. And, I, and folks, for for, the, for my subscribers to my opening call, probably Saturday going to Sunday, I'll have time. I'm going to do a lot of continue working on my uh, big picture chart that I thought I'd shown two weekends ago. And then I realized I hadn't when I saw Steve Rhodes show the same chart with almost the same trend line and black background. I thought, did I just send that off? Why Why is it there? Am I? What? And then I realized that was Steve's. I wasn't able, unfortunately, to actually listen to what he, the comments he made. But that was just really strange. Out of all the, you know, out of all these times to suddenly show that exact monthly chart, what a coincidence. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not sure whether he's... Um, uh, he, he, he's told me now uh, kind of what he's looking at is very interesting. I have a slightly different uh, um, look at it with other techniques. So I'll, I'll do that over the weekend. Um, maybe the conclusion at the end will be the same because we're both looking at a, a, a big rally at some point to come that pushes the Dow really sharply higher. But I'm thinking that the consolidation is more important. So for those of you who are really wondering Okay, what do I do if I've got funds and I, I either I did or I didn't get into the uh, Dow for this last phase of the last, say, three, four months? I'm thinking, <coughs> I, I can't say 100% for sure, but I'm thinking there's going to be an opportunity to start positioning yourself for the longer term. And I would say that if there was a pullback between seven and 800 points, maybe that's where you could start your position. I think it might be a little deeper. I don't know. I, I need a couple of days just to really get numbers. And I don't want anyone to miss out if it starts to move and I, I, you know, I haven't said anything. I'm saying 
that because I anticipate some kind of a pullback, whether it's 8% or 12% or even 14%, I just can't say at this particular time, but I do believe there should be a pullback. I'll talk a little bit more about it when we come back from the break. But most importantly, if you're structuring yourself for the very long term, nibbling maybe here or preferably 700 points lower, that's kind of where I would start the process of, of building up a portfolio for the next big move to the upside. But I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. So a couple of things. I, uh, this is a work in progress, okay, because I need to see how the dollar acts, the, the bonds. A lot depends on going into this week's monthly close in, the, in, in many of the indices, but it also goes into this week's weekly close in a lot of the, the, the uh, shorter-term uh, indexes or ETFs like gold, etc. And that's going to be very important as well as, of course, really important in the TLT. Is this a mini top? Is it going to be pulling back? Is it going to break out? A lot depends on over the coming days. But the GBTC, which is the Bitcoin Investment Trust, that peak F top in the monthly chart of 38.71, I still see nothing. <clears throat> it's trying to build a base. I think it needs more time. That's the whole Bitcoin thing. Um, if you look at... Uh, so, uh, let me go to GWPH, which is one of the uh, more mature uh, of the um, pharmaceutical, medical marijuana, GW Pharmaceuticals, uh, trading down $1.42, $168.58. It's holding quite well. I think this is going to become more and more selective. It's not out of focus at all. It will become uh, uh, very uh, important. The leaders over the next two months are going to really... Um, sort the wheat from the chaff, I think that's the expression. Okay, 
So as far as the Dow is concerned, um, I, oh, oh, let me just do this because it's also part of the picture. FXI, which is the iShares China large cap ETF. Remember the other day I had said back in the 4150 area, I said, if you want risk to reward in the EEM, yes, you could start a little nibble on the, on, on, for, for a rally because it's had all the testing and you know exactly where your stop should be. I'd make the stop fairly tight. And here it is at 43.20 on the EEM. Same pattern in the FXI, but they really haven't broken to the upside. I was just talking about risk reward. So, folks, you've got Steve coming up, then you've got Dave, then you've got Tom. But the, the what happens this afternoon, based on what the Fed says, is going to be really important for a number of reasons. And the most important reason, I think, is how does the TLT, which is trying to form a base in the 116s, will it break into the 1780s? over the next two, three days as yields suddenly come down or does it go under 116 and yields start to break out even more? That's going to be really important and that should influence the dollar. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Stay tuned for great programming and check out my opening call and uh, have a great day. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank, and get the type of interest they receive. Instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on buildable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per buildable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year, paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month per lot ranged from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.